Well, this summer, Canada is celebrating its 150th birthday, 150 years of our country developing, changing, and growing. All summer long, we're going to take a look at different snapshots of life here in Canada, and today, we go from then to now. Starting off in Fogo Island on the eastern edge of Newfoundland, a tiny community of mighty people whose success for the future has been paved in the past. This is where Zita Cobb was born and raised. Every day, the first thing you did would be rush to the window and see what's going on outside, because everything is determined by what the weather is and what nature is doing. And as kids, the greatest delight, no matter what the season, we would scour the land wash, you know, that kind of beautiful liminal space between the ocean and the land. And of course, overnight, the ocean would have brought things to shore that were new and exciting to us. I mean, the most the amazing thing we ever found was a little tiny glass bottle with a cap. It was a perfume bottle, and it still had the lid. And when we opened it, it still had the smell. And it was like this really exotic smell. Zito was one of seven children in a house with no running water or electricity. She left home at 16 to study in Ottawa. She became a star in business and left her tech company with a cool $69 million. Then she found her way back home to Fogo. You know, when you are born and raised in Outport, Newfoundland, it never leaves you. It shapes how you see the world, how you relate to people. And for me, in particular, growing up in a super rocky place, these rocks were always a part of my everyday life. And on these rocks, Zita found her next calling, the Shore Fast Foundation, a not-for-profit organization to revitalize Fogo with social businesses that belong to the community. Heritage in and of itself, it's a burden if you feel that you have to live in a quaint little fishing village, you know, from 1950. And I don't think that has a lot of appeal to anyone. You know, I use this poem a lot, which is from a New Zealand poet, the art of walking upright is the art of using both feet. One is for holding on and one is for reaching out. And what we were trying to figure out is how do we hold on to who we are, to what we know, and the way we know it in our place, and reach out and belong to the world because we want to belong to the world. She also founded Fogo Island Arts, a residency-based contemporary art program. Stunning galleries are scattered around the island, drawing inspiration of their own with their unique architecture. Contemporary artists are kind of people who resist. It's a way of critical thinking. And given all the rocks in the harbor that we have to navigate as a little community, we thought we really needed to have that embedded in the way we think and the way we work. The Fogo Island Inn has been named the most remote and magical hotel on earth, drawing guests from around the world. How to express in contemporary architecture, using materials that are from this place, a way of expressing what we have learned in 400 years of clinging to this rock. The wallpaper, the furniture, the quills, everything here was made by the people of Fogo. My mother-in-law always used to say that if you had a piece of material, and it was a really nice piece of material, you made a dress. If it wasn't good enough for a dress, it would go into a quilt. And if it wasn't good enough for a quilt, it went into a floor mat. So it's the value of things. Using the patterns of the past, to help design the future. There was actually one of the heritage quilts that we had borrowed from a lady in the community. These pieces were all hand stitched and it was done at night with kerosene lamp for your light, but still the beautiful stitches were really a treasure. We learned a lot from those old quilts. Building on tradition. It's a basic design actually, something that has been on the go for dog's ages, I guess, what? Huh? There's nothing complicated about it. Some of the tools we were using before to what we got now, and that in turn makes the job much easier. It's like going from a chevette to a Cadillac. There's a rocking chair upstairs that I built a few months ago. I mean, it looks old-fashioned, but then it don't. Restoring history and reigniting heritage. Alfonso is very interesting work because 
When you start, it's like you're bringing something to life. It's like you're, you turned wood with your hands into something that's, I mean, it looks beautiful, but it's not. When we uh, were starting to try and say these little wooden puns, he was one of the early people to say, I want, I'll build, you know, I want to. Even though those puns don't have any relevance in the contemporary fishery, they still have a relevance because they talk about our relationship with wood, which is also profound and our relationship with the sea. My father used to always say to me, don't forget where you come from. And I said, why wouldn't I forget where I come from? It's not all that great here. He said, because someday, my son, you might have to go back there. Look where I'm to. Fogo is driven by its strongest resource, its people. Most lovely inns have concierges. And in one community meeting, as we start to talk about that, somebody actually burst out laughing and said, I wouldn't want to have that job because I'll have everybody on Fogo Island telling them what to do. And so we thought, well, why don't we just have a community host program? So when guests arrive, we you know, put them together with a local person who becomes their guide. It will be like visiting Fogo Island and having distant cousins on the island that you've never met. The Shore Fest is about everyone here on the island. It's about people. Uh, I mean, like everybody couldn't envision a person. She said, okay, this is for you. And, you know, you make it whatever it is. And, and it's, it's you we're showcasing to the world. It's not a building. That's not what it's about. When dreams become reality, Zita feels the responsibility to her home, her community. I don't want all of the ways of knowing, all of the knowledge, all of the love all of the wisdom, all of the trying, all of the people who died out there trying to make a living. I don't want what they lived for to be lost. And the world is watching. You know, if you read all the things that people write about us, which are by and large lovely and we much appreciate it, the thing that people most often say is, I can't explain it. I can't explain what draws me to this place. Farley Mowat, may he rest in peace, had a, a, a line which always stuck with me. He said, Outport Newfoundland has a charisma that cannot be explained. <laughs>